Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. So a couple of months ago, we got my daughter a new bed, and when we got rid of the old one, it wasn't really nice enough to keep or to sell to somebody, uh, but as I took it apart, I had all these planks that supported the upper bunk portion of the bed, and they were in pretty much perfect condition. Um, I've got seven in total. There's six here. I've got another one floating around somewhere. And I just, I hate throwing stuff out uh, that can be repurposed or used for, for something else. So I set these aside and uh, just figured, you know, an idea will come to me uh, or just, you know, I'll have a need for, for something like this. Uh, and the other day I was walking through the garage and I saw them and I thought, you know what? They're like the perfect size for shelves. And my wife was always telling me we need more shelves around the house and the kids' rooms and stuff. So uh, I took another look at them and they're solid MDF. They're actually pretty heavy. Uh, they do have uh, a hole straight through inset from the edge on both sides, uh, but they are melamine on, on each side. There's no exposed MDF on any of the faces uh, of these boards. And I thought they'll, just be, they'll be perfect for shelves. So that's what I want to do. I want to come up with a design uh, for some shelf brackets that I can print that are the right size for these boards. Um, I could probably do just, you know, if I had some of those white stickers, it'd be perfect for covering these holes, but I can probably just make some small plugs uh, for these guys as well. And the, the overall size of these, let's see, these are uh, about 38 inches long and about eight and a quarter deep. So the length is gonna be just perfect for shelves, at least here in the US. Uh, our wall studs are usually 16 inches on center, which means I'm gonna have, let's see, a stud at 32, and I know you guys can't see the other end of this, uh, <laughs> this shelf board here, but um, I'm splitting the difference. So I'm gonna end up with uh, a shelf bracket here and a shelf bracket on the other end spaced about the same distance in from the edge of the board. Uh, so I shouldn't have to cut these down. Um, I'm not going to have the brackets set way in from the sides. They're not going to be all the way at the edge. It should, again, just end up working to be the perfect size for shelves. So let's go design. All right, and here's what I came up with. So it's a pretty basic right triangle. Uh, this, this is 200 millimeters in length, as is this. Uh, and I imported a gear profile that I designed before, just from an aesthetics perspective, to kind of spice this up a little bit, uh, give it kind of like a make theme or a maker theme. Uh, I inset one side. Uh, I have a nice uh, rounded corner uh, bevel in here. Uh, the other side's flat. Uh, this is the side that I want to print against the, the bed. You could print this standing up, but I think it's going to be stronger uh, with this face printed down. And it's also going to be a cleaner print just because we don't have that much height uh, in the print in comparison to standing up. I entertain the idea of doing it in two pieces, uh, just basically printing, just get rid of this half here and print two of this side or print a mirror of this side uh, and then placing them together so you had the inset on both sides. But ultimately, I thought, you know what, I don't think it's a big deal uh, to not have the inset on the inside face. So what I did spend some time on is sort of some special, I guess you could say, tooling uh, for this. So let me hide the shelf. And what I've got here is some dowel pins. Here, I'll hide one of them. Um, rather than screwing 
the shelf board to the top of these, uh, what I figured we could do here is just have some plastic dowels uh, and drill holes into the bottom of the shelf uh, and just kind of make this a friction fit so it presses down uh, into place on this. Uh, and the other thing that I did was I designed the back of this so that uh, we could use some just standard drywall screws uh, sticking out of the wall a bit. So probably like a two and a half or three inch drywall screw uh, so that it has nice bite through the, the sheetrock and into the stud, uh, but also has plenty of length left over to go into this hole and then slide up. These small pieces here are actually integrated supports. You can see they don't quite touch. There's 0.1 millimeter uh, in space here on both sides. It's not actually connected. Uh, of course, when this goes to print, whichever face this is laying on, um, one side is essentially going to end up connected since we're not going to print in midair. Uh, and same thing with, you know, right where it touches this edge. But it should be really easy to just reach in with a needle nose pliers and break that piece out. What I mean here for a screw going in, I'll, I'll get rid of this face. You can see uh, the head of the screw is going to go in and then you, you push this you push this bracket down, forcing the screw up into here. Uh, pretty standard design. I mean, this is the same type of design you have on the back of many things that are meant for... Uh, wall mounting. I hadn't done this before in a 3D print, but it wasn't that hard to draw. Now, a pet peeve of mine with this type of attachment method is you never know how far to put the screw in, and if they don't include a template, and some things do. Some things, you know, you get them in the box and there's a paper template that you can use to mark the wall for where the screws go. Uh, but of course, if you're reusing something, um, you know, or it didn't include that, you got to like, put a piece of paper up and get kind of a rubbing of the back and use that on the wall or something like that. And then you still don't know how far to put the screws in. So if you're anything like me, you know, you put the screw in, you take a guess, turn the screw out a little bit, turn the screw in a little bit until you have just that right friction fit. Uh, and then, you know, put whatever that object is under the wall. I hate doing that. So I designed a tool for that as well. So let me go and unhide all the objects here in the drawing. Uh, there's two additional tools here, actually. Um, this is the one for the screws. So we get that perfect fit. And uh, here, I'll hide the shelf board. So this is basically meant to go uh, right on the wall. Uh, and this sits at the height at the underside of the shelf. So you could figure out your rough shelf height, uh, put a level on the wall, put this right up to the level. And then this is the same thickness as those screw holes on the back of the actual shelf brackets. So we can just take a screw, put it right here at the top of each one of these holes screw it in on this guide until we get the tension that we want, basically just putting the screw in right into the guide uh, and then slide this guide up, pull it off, and our screws are going to be in the exact right position ready to go. Uh, this piece here is a drill guide uh, for the actual shelf boards themselves. So here I'll, I'll put that back. So there's our shelf board. So this has sort of a fence on it. This goes right up against the back of that shelf board. We have a little section here to align because we can mark the uh, we can mark on the shelf where those holes are going to go on the back since we'll never see that. Uh, and then this acts as a drill guide for the exact position of those two holes uh, that we're going to put in here. And if I hide this again, you can see I put some text right on here uh, that this is aligning to the rear of that shelf board. Uh, and we're going to use either a 3 8 or a 9.5 millimeter drill bit and these two holes uh, to get the the holes that are going to correspond to these dowel pins on that shelf board. So, and I mark this guy top too, although I would hope that's fairly obvious just given the orientation of the, uh, the sliding screw holes. So, all right, I think that covers most of the key things. Uh, let's, uh, let's go hit print. I think we got everything off the printer or printers that we need. Um, these pieces I did on my Prusa Mark III. The, uh, the gray and the white pieces I actually did on my old school ANET A8. Um, heavily modified machine, but uh, I didn't leave myself enough time. And uh, it was all the Mark III could do to get these guys out in time for the video. So um, thank you. Uh, thank you, my old classic ANET A8. So the first shelf is going to go in my daughter's room. And uh, she picked the color for these, and she's here to help me with these today. So why'd you pick that color? Hi. So basically, I like the way, like, the, the colors of my walls. And it's shiny. 
it is really shiny. So this is the, uh, it's the Silk Shiny Copper. I think this is by TTY 3D or TTY something. I, I'll link it down in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, I don't know if the camera is really doing justice to the uh, the finish, but it really does have a nice shiny finish. So, all right, I think the first thing that we need to do is to get these, these little white caps um, into the holes here on the side. I didn't show this in the design, but these are just a simple uh, you know, sort of plug piece. Uh, it's just real real thin sort of lip there on the end, and that is sized to be a nice uh, interference fit in these holes. So you want to put these in? All right, those are set to go. I think the next thing to do is to actually go in and uh, get the screws into the wall. That way, if our studs are not exactly uh, 16 inch on center, we haven't drilled the holes in the wrong place on this. So let's go in your room and get the two shelf brackets in place. All right, I figured we go here with the shelf. I already kind of scoped out where some of the studs are. We can't be quite centered on here. It's gonna be kind of more on this side, but I think Mr. Owl is still gonna be in the way, so he's gonna to have to go. No. And there we go. Perfect fit. And we are right on level. Let's, uh, let's grab the shelf and get it up there. All right, all we gotta do is make sure we have an equal distance on either side now, and then we'll mark underneath. And we can take this back out and drill it for those dowels. All right, moment of truth. One of our pins lined up. Hopefully this should drop right into place. Perfect. What do you think? It looks good. Yeah? Yeah. Got stuff you're gonna put on there now? Guys, thanks for hanging out for this build. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel and uh, lets me know what kind of content you guys like to see. And if this is your first video here, I do a new video like this every single Friday on the channel. So if you enjoyed this, uh, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. And guys, if you do subscribe, I will see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.